joining us this evening. Um, we are joined by Matthew tonight and we're going to talk all preparing for a social work interview. I'm just going to wait a minute to see if there's anyone else joining us and then I'll hand over to my colleague. And um, Matthew, can I hand over to you now? Yes, thank you, Natalie. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Matthew Quaife. I'm a senior lecturer in social work, and I'm also the, the academic admissions tutor for social work here at Middlesex. So a very warm welcome um, to you um, this evening. Um, I've been at Middlesex now for five years, and um, part of my role um, alongside um, admissions is that I'm a, an associate program lead for the MA and PG DIP accelerated programs and I also teach um, across um, the undergraduate, postgraduate and CPD programs um, that we provide here at Social Work. And just briefly, my practice background is as a social worker um, in the community mental health team um, where I acted as a care coordinator um, and an approved uh, mental health professional in central London. So um, next slide please Natalie. So today we will be focusing as you can imagine on uh, preparing for your social work um, interview. However I'm, I'm, uh, I understand a few of you may have uh, may not be at that stage yet and you're really trying to work out um, should I apply for social work um, should uh, I apply to, to Middlesex? And the answer to both is, a, is an absolute resolute yes. Do go for a social work career and do apply um, to Middlesex because we're, we're um, one of the best providers of social work education in London. So a little bit of time will be spent um, on your UCAS application. Um, focus will be uh, um, uh, provided on the interview process. Um, and then sometime afterwards for uh, Q&A um, from you um, to discuss the um, admissions process and any other questions that you may have for the programme. I believe that we have um, until uh, we have an hour for this um, session. Um, we'll see how we go. Um, but I really look forward to hearing your feedback and, and your questions. If we could save them to the very end, um, that would be really, really helpful. Next slide, please, Natalie. So we're going to focus on uh, before the interview. Um, thank you. So we're just having a look at your UCAS application. So applications for the undergraduate BA Honours, BA on Social Work Programme, which is a three-year programme, they really need to come in as soon as possible. You may be aware that UCAS has a, um, a deadline for applications. It's a soft deadline, but it's a deadline nonetheless of January the 26th, I believe. So if you're still um, in the process of compiling your academic qualifications, obtaining your reference, and most importantly, you're drafting your personal statement, you probably know this by now via colleges, access course providers, sixth form colleges, that you have your deadline of the 26th of January. So do um, try and uh, meet that deadline where possible. For any um, inquirers tonight who are considering social work via our postgraduate routes, which is the PG DIP and the MA, both completed over 14 months. Again, the same principle applies. You need to apply via UCAS, even if you're an international um, inquirer. And if you are, a very warm welcome to the UK, Middlesex and London tonight. And you do need to um, apply via, via UCAS um, as well. And the most important aspect of your personal statement, really alongside 
meeting the entry criteria, which we'll have a look in a minute, is your personal statement. I won't spend too much time on that, but what, to achieve um, shortlist, shortlisting to the next stage of the recruitment process, your personal statement really needs to stand out. It needs to be well drafted, first and foremost. So please, please do proofread it. Please check for spelling errors, grammatical mistakes, and, and, and um, sentence construction um, problems. Sometimes we're we're very much invested in in writing what you what you want the audience, the reader to, to see, and and forget to proofread it. Remember, social work is a professional program. You'll be writing reports for court, for service users, for for colleagues in your teams. So your level of English needs to be of a good state, uh, a good standard. So the first time we see that is at the um, UCAS personal statement stage. So make sure your statement is grammatically tip top. Then consider, have I really brought to the fore my motivations for social work? Will the person who is reading this really know why I'm applying for a social work degree? Yes, I want to help somebody. You can help people in lots of different um, sectors. So why is it social work that you want to help vulnerable people? What is it about social work that stands out for you? It could be professional experience, it could be personal experience or some other reasons, but really the rule of thumb, make sure your motivations for social work really stand out. Think about also your um, transferable skills, transferable knowledge, transferable experience. Even if you have limited work experience or no work experience for, for some undergraduate applicants, what placements have you undertaken um, at college or school? Mentoring of, of students, for example. Perhaps you've worked part time or, or volunteered, but worked with other people. And think about um, the relationships that you built up with the people that you worked with. How did you overcome any problems or challenges engaging with that individual or individuals? What communication skills did you use? If you have a more enhanced, um, relatable social care or healthcare experience, really get that across as well. We really encourage applicants, particularly on the postgraduate um, programs who have um, demonstrated um, at least a few months uh, relatable social care, volunteering, charitable sector, healthcare sector, or something else that you think relates well to social work um, as well. Um, lastly, personal qualities. Um, think about what social work is all about. We'll look at that at a future um, slide in a few minutes. But what will make you a good social work student and a good social worker? So in terms of a social work student um, uh, and, and uh, academia, what will make you a good student? What's made you a successful student so far? But also your personal qualities as well. Are you empathetic? Are you compassionate? Are you caring? Are you a good listener? and lots more qualities. And yes, we're also interested in your personal hobbies and, and uh, things that, that you like doing as well. So I hope that gives you some insight of what we're looking for in your UCAS personal statement. And fingers crossed, you get shortlisted and we'll take you to the next stage. Uh, next slide, please, Natalie. Um, so um, do um, look at our, our course requirements. Lots of you here tonight are in that zone of is social work for me? Do I have the correct work experience? Do I have the correct educational qualifications? Um, do I need to know a little bit more about social work? And our course pages, BA ONS, MA social work and PG DIP social work provide you with all the details that you need to know with regards to our entry requirements, some further reading that you can undertake and there are also some tips on, on the interview questions that you might be asked as well. Next slide, please. So in terms of our entry um, requirements, um, let's have a look at the undergraduate, the BA honours, first of all. So we can accept uh, a, a range of qualifications. Um, so the rule of thumb is 120 to 128 UCAS tariff points. So if we look at A-levels, that's three A-levels, um, 
roughly equivalent to BBB, and that will achieve the 120, 128 um, tariff quota. You can also apply by doing an access to a higher education diploma um, or an access to social work diploma. And of course you must pass there and you have um, on screen the credits that you must uh, um, achieve. Lots of our undergraduate students um, have applied via um, undertaking a, a BTEC extended diploma in health and social care or something else that is relatable. Um, for our MA and PG DIP applicants here tonight, um, we're really looking for um, applicants that have a good um, uh, un, uh, first degree. So typically we're looking for applicants who have uh, an upper second, a 2-1 um, degree. However, we can accept some applicants who have a, a lower second, a 2-2, um, if they can demonstrate uh, relatable work experience to some extent. This can be as, uh, as few as uh, as little as three to six months. Um, but it, make sure if you are applying for an MA or PGD DIP social work qualification and you do have a 2-2, make sure your personal statement really demonstrates, like I said, your motivations, your transferable um, employment history, transferable skills, et cetera. You're really gonna have to, to enhance that personal statement to demonstrate that you are a really good candidate for Middlesex University. For all our social work qualifying programs, MA, PG DIP, BA, you must have maths and English GCSE at level two. That means either the old um, grade C, the new grade four or equivalent, international equivalent or um, a level two functional maths or a level two English um, award as well. If you have any queries about English and maths, international qualifications, ILETs, um, anything else, get in contact with our admissions team and they'd be very pleased to, to, to guide you and let you know whether you meet the entry criteria at least on, on a qualification um, level. So you've submitted your, uh, next slide please, Natalie. You've submitted your UCAS statement um, and you have been shortlisted. So the next stage will be uh, an online literacy test um, that you will have approximately seven days to complete. And we will be assessing your critical uh, analytical skills and of course your literacy skills based on uh, a social work related um, essay question. So um, I can't give you the details of that um, now. We have to try and provide some element of a controlled setting, although you are doing this at home, but we do provide you with online guidance uh, ahead of that assignment uh, request, uh, assignment requirement, I should say, um, should you be shortlisted. So typically it's between six, 700 to a thousand words completed over, a, uh, over seven days. Um, we're checking that you can construct a, 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 a basic assignment related to a social work topic We'll give you guidance. There will be resources that you can watch, videos that you can watch to, to help you think about um, how you can approach this assignment. And we're looking at structure of an assignment. We're looking at spelling. We're looking at grammar. We're looking at sentence uh, construction. But also, can you offer a basic uh, critical analysis, a discussion, an evaluation of some key points? So should you be shortlisted at, um, uh, at your literacy test um, stage, we will then progress you to the final, the main final process of, 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 uh, of admissions for social work. Next slide, please, which is the social work interview. So again, these will be provided um, online unless uh, government and university guidance changes. And we do that via Zoom. Um, and um, we will provide you with additional guidance ahead of the interview. So you will be contacted by our admissions team to offer you a choice of dates and times. Typically, one to note for now, um, we will provide interviews typically on a Wednesday and on a Saturday. 
and it will be with an academic member of staff, somebody like me, and possibly a practitioner, a social worker um, from practice somewhere in London, um, and or a service user. So somebody who has or recently has been a recipient of, of social work services. So that will be our panel. And we have six questions for you. It's a short in, uh, interview and we like to put, uh, facilitate it as informally as we can. Um, and uh, we have six questions and really we're trying to um, demonstrate the following. Uh, we want you to demonstrate the following. Number one, again, your motivations, your passion for social work. Why do you want to study this subject? So if there was ever a hint at uh, an interview question for university, there it is. Why do you want to study social work? So again, really think about this. So yes, we want individuals applying to all of our programs to want to help people. But as I've said before, social work is sometimes more than helping and it is distinct from other helping professions. So you can help in uh, nursing, you can help in medicine, you can help as a paramedic, you can help in teaching, you can help in the police force and other services uh, as well. So what is it about social work that really draws you to that profession? Two, we, we would recommend that you uh, familiarize yourself with the role of, of the social worker. And the way to do that is by reading. So this is where some candidates um, don't uh, do as well as they had expected to an interview is that they hadn't undertaken the necessary research on what do social workers actually do. So one, yes, they're very good at demonstrating why they want to be a social wor worker, why they think they would be a good social worker and their passion and motivation for social work. But then they sometimes fall a little bit short on their understanding of what social workers do. So we want to hear more than they visit people, they help people. What are they doing in their day-to-day -day role whilst they are visiting people, whilst they are helping people, whilst they are working with other team members, whilst they are going to court? What are the core duties of social work? So think about what you may have read in, in the newspapers recently and, and those terrible stories, what social workers come any inquiry may have fallen short on, safeguarding, risk assessment, risk management, care planning, assessment um, of need, um, signposting to services and, and lots more, report writing, case working, group work, um, working directly with children, um, play therapy, CBT, motivational interviewing, strengths-based approaches, working in a person-centered way, working in close partnership with, with, social, with, with service users and other social workers and other team members. So I hope you can see the difference there. I want to help, yes, but what is it that you understand that social workers are doing on a day-to-day -day basis as well. And lastly, I think I've covered some of this already, demonstrating some understanding of the knowledge and skills required for social work practice. So while you are carrying out this social work role, which is very, very important, you're going to be working with the most vulnerable people in society, both adults and children, families, older adults, um, pregnant um, mothers and their partners, people, children in care, adolescents leaving care, people accessing mental health services, older adult services, learning disability services, substance misuse services, homelessness services, housing services. What knowledge and skills do you think you will need to know to practice as a social worker? Can you demonstrate that at a very early level at interview? So for example, knowledge of the law that relates to social work, that could be the Children Act, the Mental Health Act, the Mental Capacity Act. You don't need to know this for interview, of course, but we want to gauge a sense of what you will be learning as a social work student. 
knowledge, uh, demonstrating key communication skills, demonstrating empathy, demonstrating active listening, uh, awareness of nonverbal communication skills and body language, a sense of self, understanding that social work is very much rooted in reflective practice, understanding that if I'm working with vulnerable service users, it may make me feel a certain way. Does that then affect my practice? So I hope that's some idea in terms of the interview, but let's have a look at some other slides. Uh, next slide, please. So um, another way to demonstrate your awareness of the social work profession is also to understand how we will be um, assessing you. So the, the entire admissions process, your UCAS statement, your um, literacy test, and indeed the interview, are based around these, what we call domains. So is the candidate professional, for example? Have they arrived on time? Does the candidate have an understanding of what social workers do, skills and interventions? Um, does uh, uh, the candidate have a sense of their own self? Have they thought about some of the values and beliefs that they, um, uh, hold here to hold dear to themselves that also may or may not um, mirror social work values. Do they know what social work values are? So these domains from professionalism all the way around to knowledge and awareness of social work and its organizations are some of the criteria that we are um, assessing you against. You don't have to worry too much about that because our questions in the interview are designed to elicit these, uh, this information from you. Next slide, please. So personal qualities is really, really important. So think about yourself. What makes you one, a good student and what will make you a good student undertaking a degree? Uh, uh, over three years. And for MA and PG DIP applicants, this is a fast track, accelerated 14 month program. We've condensed the two year masters into 14 months. And both the MA and the PG DIP are completed uh, um, over 14 months and they both achieve a social work qualification and you can register both the MA and the PG DIP with Social Work England. So, thinking about that, first of all, is that for me? And then at interview, you may be asked to, to, uh, uh, to, to talk about, well, you're applying for a master's level program at university, and it's also accelerated. So it is very intense and you do hit the ground running. Thinking about your own personal circumstances, is that viable for you? So we may talk about that um, to some extent um, during the interview. But think, all of you here tonight, think about the qualities um, that you have that will make you a good social worker. And we talked about some of them before. So you may be compassionate, I hope you are, um, kind, I hope you are, empathetic, um, a, a good listener, uh, a good communicator, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll be assessing your communication skills um, uh, at the UCAS personal statement stage, um, at the literacy test stage, but also at the interview um, stage as well. So make sure you really, really listen to the interviewer, um, because sometimes anxiety and nerves takes over. And we do take into account um, uh, that some students get very anxious at interview and that's okay. And we'll prompt you and we'll sometimes reframe the question if necessary. You can ask us to ask the question again, but be conscious of how you're communicating. Are you listening or are you interrupting the panel? Um, so think about your both your ver, um, verbal and nonverbal communication skills. Get a sense, uh, a genuine sense. We want to see genuineness from you. So don't act your motivation. Don't try and fake your commit your your committal to the program or your enthusiasm. That has to come from you naturally. But we want you to demonstrate through the questions that we ask you, your motivation, your commitment and your enthusiasm as well. 
ahead of applying or for interview, I really want you to be thinking about issues of diversity and equality. What does it really mean for you? Do some additional um, reading about that, rather than just offer a statement to say, I, I support equality. Well, what does that mean? The panel may say, tell me a little bit more about that. So do some additional reading um, about um, equality. You may be interested in equality in terms of the law and the Equality Act and the Human Rights Act and social work practice. Or it may be on more on a personal level where you're a real believer in social justice, which is very much at the heart of social work practice, where human rights apply to all. It, that will be to the adult with, with mental health problems and also to the person that you're working with who may have committed a crime and may make you feel a particular way. If you're interested and support equality, it, it applies to all um, um, individuals that we work with. We'll also be focusing in, in an aspect of the interview. Here's another hint in terms of working with service users directly. And, and by that, I mean in partnership with service users. And we want you now to be thinking about what does that mean? So joint working, working together, working collaboratively with service users, working in partnership. So it's important to be aware of the uh, why we need to work in partnership with other teams, other colleagues, other agencies. And yes, we want you to be reading about that as well. But in terms of the interview, you may be asked by a service user on the panel, why is it important for social workers to work in partnership with a service user? And also, how do you get to that point? How do you know that you're working jointly with a service user? What skills would you be employing um, where you could say to yourself, me and Mr. Jones are working really well together. We seem to be working jointly in partnership. We're in collaboration with each other. So have a think about partnership working with service users at this, this stage of the recruitment um, process um, as well. And the last thing I want to say on this slide is, is uh, read, read, read. Um, where students uh, fall at another hurdle during the interview process is that they demonstrate motivation. They demonstrate awareness of social work um, uh, values, and they have a broad sense of, of, of what's happening in social work. But if they haven't read, um, then they won't be able to provide um, uh, sufficient depth to some of the questions. Now, we may well ask you, hint, hint, what have you read? in preparation for the interview that relates to, to social work and your understanding of the social work role. So read and um, try and read beyond um, the BBC or um, simply psychology or um, something that you quickly stumbled across on the internet. We will give you suggested reading should you be invited to interview. You don't have to read them all. We don't expect you to read them all. Just a chapter or two from one or two books, an article here or there. We'll signpost you to, to a website. But for now, go to Community Care Online. So you Google Community Care, separate word, online, and it will take you to the online social work magazine that really highlights the issues and dilemmas that are that are affecting social work practice in the UK currently. Another really good resource to get you thinking about what's happening in social work is uh, BASWA. So that's the British Association of Social Workers um, and also the regulatory bodies, Social Work England. And you can learn about the professional standards that guide social workers once they have been registered. But also pick up a, a good social work book. And, and we do have a reading list. For now, at the top of my head, Neil Thompson, Understanding Social Work. And, and have a read of one or two of the chapters and perhaps skim read, make some notes. And by doing so, alongside those websites and anything else that you feel uh, um, links to social work, I guarantee you will come into your interview feeling much more reassured and confident in yourself 
And I guarantee that you will do a much better interview than somebody who has not done any advanced reading. And think about why do we ask you to read? Well, you're undertaking academic study where we will be expecting you to be reading two or three or four times a week whilst you're undertaking the course. So if you can demonstrate to us that you've, you're undertaking reading at interview level, you're gonna reassure people, uh, the panel, that you're going to make a good academic student as well. Um, and also think about a question or two within time limits that you may want to ask the panel. Um, you don't have to ask, ask a question. You don't leave the interview thinking, oh no, it will go against me because I haven't asked the question. You may find that by attending sessions such as these, open days, open evenings, uh, discussions that you have with your interview panel, your own background reading, the resources available on the Middlesex website is sufficient. So you don't have to ask an interview and it, we don't assess you whether you have asked uh, a question or not, but the invitation is there. Next, next slide, please. So um, we've touched on some of these already. I won't spend too much more time, but um, think about your transferable skills. This, is, this applies both for the UCAS statement and uh, during interview. So some of the uh, um, uh, things that we're, we're looking for again are your good listening skills, your good verbal communication skills, nonverbal skills. You may want to demonstrate uh, these from, uh, from your academic study at school, college, um, work experience. Some of you may have more advanced transferable skills such as leadership skills. That can be just purely sharing information and knowledge with others, or it could be more traditional forms of leadership. You may have good analytical, organizational skills, research skills, delegation skills, time management skills. So there may be questions where we ask you, well, what will make you a good social work student or indeed a good social worker? So these are some of the concepts that you may want to think about a little bit more. Next slide, please. Next slide, please, Natalie. So you heard me earlier refer to social work values. It's really important you start undertaking some research about social work values at this early stage because values are at the core of social work practice. And a really good resource again is BASWA, so B-A-S-W, excuse me, British Association of Social Workers, and look up codes, the BASWA Code of Ethics and Values. Um, so very much social work is uh, about promoting rights and promoting strengths and pr promoting independence and well-being of people. It's about developing relationships, um, trustworthy, honest, respectful, transparent and open uh, relationships so that you can, gain the the, you can gain the confidence of vulnerable people, hesitant people, resistant individuals. Social work is very much being accountable and it's very that that issue is very topical at the moment about where things have gone wrong. Is the individual social worker accountable or is it the broader social work team, department, local authority, government that should be accountable? So that's a very topical issue at the moment. CPD is about uh, continuing professional development. We don't need to worry uh, too much that, uh, about that today. Social work is very much rooted in working with, with uh, uh, respectfully. So despite who we are working with, despite how they are making us feel, we still have to work respectfully, honestly, transparently, openly with, with service users. Um, and of course, the safeguarding role of, of social work, um, reporting concerns, not holding on to concerns and thinking they will just go away or somebody else will deal with them. That as a social worker, we're a professional and we are accountable. I've learned about a concern about a vulnerable adult or a child. I am now going to act on that concern. And that is very much at the heart of social work practice as well. So think about these values and then think about your values as well. What do you hold dear to you? What's very important to you? And see where they, they tally or marry up. And if there are differences, that's okay as well. But it's, 
it's very important in social work that we are honest and aware that sometimes our beliefs are different to the professional values and can we come can we compromise can we come together and this is where we talk about our values our judgments our ethics with our supervisors with our practice educators with our peers with our colleagues with our friends and families we, we, we have to be very honest in how we're feeling because we need to be aware that strong feelings that and values that we may hold that could be different to social work values we have to make sure that it's not going to impact on the practice uh, that we provide so think about some examples traditionally it can come from religious beliefs that some people may have and then we are asked to carry out a professional role that may be in conflict of our religious beliefs are we going to just ignore the professional role? Of course not. So we're going to talk to a supervisor or another a social worker. I feel this way, but the profession says I must do this. So we have to be guided by professional values um, and the regulatory framework as well. So have a good read about social work values because that will come as a, as a feature during the interview as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so just to end, um, at this very early stage, some of you may be just inquiring, thinking, some of you may have applied, some of you may be awaiting an interview. Regardless of the stage that you're at, I just want to highlight now um, with regards to the placements that we provide. So all social work students, regardless whether they're on an undergraduate or a postgraduate programme, will complete two placements. The first of which will be a 70-day placement, usually in the voluntary sector, and the second placement will be a 100-day placement where you will complete and undertake statutory tasks. That means you undertake a social work role that is um, underpinned by legislation, so the Children Act, the Mental Health Act, for example. In, for undergraduates, BA students, the 70-day placement is in year two, and the 100-day placement is in year three. For PG DIP and MA um, applicants, students, the 70 day placement begins uh, in November 2022, and the 100 day placement begins in March or April 2023. So they run almost consecutively. There will be a short break in between. We want to highlight tonight to say this is where Middlesex placements. Uh, the vast majority, 99% of our placements are in North London. And we want you to take that account into account because sometimes what happens is that students are very excited about joining Middlesex and uh, uh, they really want to, to undertake a social work program with us. And then um, they may have heard somebody during an open day or an interview or um, at pre-induction that, in, that placements are in the North London area and, and they may live in a, in a different area or somewhere quite far away and, uh, and everything will be okay. And then they, they get a little bit disappointed when it comes to placing uh, that person and we then place them in Barnet or Brent or Hackney or Enfield. And we have to say, are, again, our placements are only located in these areas. So please do take this, that into account at this early stage. We cover a vast range of London though. So hopefully the majority of you will are living or will be living in areas either in these particular areas or very near to them, but do expect some travel in time. The maximum travel in time to placement, and this applies, I believe, across mental health nursing and other nursing students is 90 minutes. But we do take into account where you live and trying to minimize uh, excessive commutes. But just to, to reinforce the point again, this these are where our placements are located. Um, and we can't find placements based on where you live. We, we match students to where the students, uh, to where the placements already exist. Um, next slide. So just to move on to useful links before we move on to Q&A. 
Um, so take a screenshot um, of, of uh, uh, some links here. Uh, you can watch a video with one of our social work academics. Um, and there's a skills lab um, video um, as well. So social work is um, uh, within the Department of Mental Health and Social Work. So there will be opportunities to work with mental health nursing students in what we call interprofessional learning workshops, which are usually outside of timetable lessons and, and for social work students, uh, um, they're, they're recommended um, activities that you can attend, but you don't have to. But it's a very good opportunity to practice working with other professionals like you will do when you're actually qualified. I think that's the end of the slides. Is, um, so we're happy to take um, any questions. I'm just going to have a look at the Q&A. Um, um, so I'm just going to begin with those. So thank you, Berthin, for your question. What kind of units will be teached? Well, I, I don't have much time uh, to focus on that today because the um, there are open days and open evenings for both under and postgraduate applicants that uh, concentrate on this uh, on your question directly. So please do go to the Middlesex website and book yourself a session. Um, and then you can have a whole uh, 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 an hour or two meeting staff individually and have a presentation on what the actual program provides. However, for you, Berthin, tonight, I will tell you that you will learn about, as an undergraduate, you will learn about issues with the community, social problems, life course development in year one and preparation, preparing you for your placement in year two, should you be a BA applicant. In year two, you will have your 70 day placement. You will undergo a basic research methods and you, you'll be introduced to both the law and theory that underpins social work practice. And in year three, you will focus on an extended essay and mini dissertation and uh, undertake your 100 day placement and also uh, undertake a further theoretical module. Um, for postgraduate um, students, many of the uh, of those modules are, are also applied, but at uh, level seven, um, you will understand. You will undertake a module subject uh, looking at the life life course development of children and adults, social work research for the MA, a dissertation, 70 day placement, 100 day placement, social work law and social work um, theory, as well as an intensive preparation for, for placement. We call it readiness for direct placement. For the literacy uh, uh, test question, I think I may have covered that. We're looking at candidates uh, to provide uh, uh, a coherent structure, introduction, main body, conclusion, that's grammatically sound, um, has a good flow in terms of sentence construction, addresses the question, answers only one question, falls within the guidance of the word, word limit, 600 to 1,000 words, and has a basic um, uh, sense of, of evaluation and discussion. Can I please repeat the different types of social workers? Well, very briefly, mental health social workers. Well, social this degree, MA, PG, DIP, and BA, your you will qualify with a generic qualification that you can maximise your employment in any social work setting. This is not frontline or think ahead or step up, which may be geared towards mental health or children and family social work. This is a generic social work degree. Um, so you will qualify and then are able to work as a mental health social worker, as a substance misuse social worker, a social worker working with older adults or people with learning disabilities, a social worker working with children in foster care look, who are looked after, children in need, child protection social workers, fostering agency social workers, um, some social workers work internationally um, as well. How many students are usually taken in for the BA social social work? Uh, normally between 40 and 50, uh, some, uh, sometimes a little bit higher than 50, um, but we have the provisions to, and resources to, to account for that. So thank you for your online questions. Are there any verbal questions that anybody would like to ask if they're able to do so? Hi, Matthew. 
Thanks okay. for um, this evening. Um, I just wanted to say on that note, Matthew, when you referred them to the open day, we have got an open day in person on Saturday, the 12th of February, that you can find all the information for on our website where you can get to meet their social work team and our um, current students. So I would encourage anyone to book onto that if they want to see the campus. Is that, is that, an, do you know, Natalie, sorry for putting you on the spot, is that an undergraduate or postgraduate day? It says it's an open day on the Saturday. It's an oh, undergraduate sorry. mainly, but there will be a, there is a postgraduate. Um, I've got the date somewhere, I've seen it. So we have a, an undergraduate um, open day for BA social work um, on Saturday, 12th of February. So, um, so you can meet a staff member or two directly and there will be a presentation. Um, and if it, and it, as it's on campus, you'll, you'll be offered campus tours um, as well yeah. and, and various workshops yeah. for UCAS applications. I can't find the postgraduate open day. Yeah, and also all the support services will be there as well. Good. If, you need, okay. if you need extra help with UCAS or emissions, um, well-being, um, student finance, you, um, everyone will be there. So it's a good chance to meet lots of other people across the university. There, there will be um, more postgraduate open days, open evenings as well. I'm yeah. sure there, 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 there are many to be scheduled in. So go to mdx.ac.uk, search for social work. And if it's MA or PG DIP that you're looking, uh, that you're interested in, you, you should see a link to book yourself onto the next um, postgraduate open day or open evening. Mm -hmm. Can, can um, uh, inquirers tonight, Natalie, ask verbal questions? Uh, no, sorry. Um, sorry, they can't. They can just put them all in the chat. If, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat. Or on our course, um, if, you, if you haven't got to think of any questions now, on our course pages, there are um, course ambassadors where you can ask a question when you like and somebody will come back with your answer for you um, on Unibody. And, and that is provided on the bottom of each course page. Good. Excellent. So in terms of your, sorry, Natalie? I was just asking, is there any more questions to come through there? I think we've answered them all. Oh, uh, done. You've done that one. You've done them all. Is there any yeah. more questions? This will be recorded and we will send it to you afterwards as well. Um, so um, if you think you've missed something, then you will be able to see it again. If you want to watch it back, you'll, you will personally get the recording anybody that attended today. I believe that we're not going to get any more questions now, Matthew. Okay, so um, oh. thank, thank you, Natalie, and thank you for your time this evening, um, inquirers. Um, so I wish you every success with your application. Um, do apply, um, like I say, as soon as possible. Um, do apply to Middlesex, make that your number one choice. Um, we are an excellent provider of social work we have excellent placements in the North London area and um, we have service users and practitioners um, who are still in practice that teach on the program um, as well. So um, I've been here five years um, and um, I think it's a great course. So we look forward to your applications, seeing your interview and um, all going well. We'll see you in September 2022 when you um, begin your program. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.